months. This is the best test as far as where you're at, where you're going. Jermaine is in for a very tough fight with a very prepared opponent, so she better bring her a game. Now I'm very excited for this fight. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, she's a young, hungry, up-and-coming fighter, and you know that keeps me excited. You know, it keeps me hungry and keeps me motivated. And I know she loves to brawl. That's all I know. I've never seen her fight. I know she loves to brawl. So uh, let's meet in the middle of the cage and brawl. Lovely Sacramento, California State Capitol, and home to the original Pony Express. This weekend, the UFC rides into town with bantamweights Jermaine Durandamy and Aspen Ladd leading the charge. The UFC Fight Night pre-show starts now on ESPN+. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the pre-show. I am Karen Bryant alongside the former welterweight champion of the world, Mr. Tyron Woodley, and ESPN reporter, Mr. Brett Okamoto. Guys, we have a couple of bantamweight ladies at the top of the card, but we also are going to see the return of Uriah Faber. And this is my first time in Sacramento, first so I'm time. excited. I get to hear a California kid as he walked out, hopefully with the bandana, I mean, and get the energy from the crowd. Dude, I am so excited for you. I have had the good fortune of seeing Uriah walk out in this setting a few times. It is right up there with the best walkouts in the sport. I am as excited to see the walkout as I am the fight. I'll admit it. Absolutely agree. I'm still triggered by his walkout song. No matter where I hear that, I'm like, oh, right. yeah, here we go. All right. We've got a lot of stuff coming up on our pre-show for you as well. Uriah will join us here at the desk, as will Aspen Ladd, who is in our main event. Brett will catch up with Josh Emmett and Juliana Pena, who is coming back after quite a long layoff. Uh, we'll actually even go more in-depth with Uriah. He's got a nice sit-down interview with Brendan Fitzgerald and also T. Wood is going to give us some predictions so you all can make some money or at least just look really smart when you're <laughs> talking with your friends. Here's a look at our fight card for Saturday night. The ladies at the top, Uriah, facing Ricky Simone in our co-main event. We've got a couple of featherweights on there. Emmett versus Bectic, Roverson versus Terman at middleweight, and also another middleweight affair between Marvin Vittori and Cesar Fajeda. But listen, T. Wood, Jermaine Duranami reached the top of the featherweight division, UFC 208. She beat Holly Holm. Since then, she's dropped to bantamweight, but she is currently on a four-fight win streak. So what sets her apart from others? You know, first she has a JDR, which sounds dope. Yeah, OSP, GSP, JDR. Yeah, when you got a three-letter deal, you must be able to fight very well. <laughs> I think she just does a great job of using her combination, full effort on her power, and it actually sets her defense up properly. So she throws off-rhythm punches, mm -hmm. digs to the body, wins in the clinch. She's never in a moment where she's not trying to dominate. Yeah, this is a true combat veteran, but Brett Aspen Ladd, there's a lot of buzz on her. It's her fourth UFC fight, and it's a main event. Yeah, I mean, that's the million-dollar question. We know exactly what we're getting with GDR, as T. Wood just told us. <laughs> but we don't know exactly what we're getting from Aspen Ladd. Everything has looked good up to this point. But I got to tell you, this is a five-round main event against an opponent who was fighting professionally when Aspen Ladd was still in diapers. So this is a big step up for her. I, she's, she looks cool, calm, and collected there, but we'll see how her nerves are once this fight starts. Absolutely, and listen, T. Wood, not for nothing, if folks saw this morning, it was a little rough way in for a Aspen. Rough. It was a little rough, and you know, she had a moment where she was grimacing a little bit, and if I'm, if I'm GDR, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, punch her in the body, punch her in the body and see yeah. if that weight cut um, can affect your outcome. It's not a new situation for her, though. I feel like Aspen's had some tougher cuts before as well. Hey, it's a tough cut for her to get down to yeah. 135. But when you were in this position, and it's your, your quote-unquote hometown, and this is your big opportunity to take on the former featherweight champ, you want everything going well. Yeah. And we didn't get off to a great start on Friday morning. Well, things can change, though. Well, let's get to the ceremonial weigh-ins. This is a lot of fun. For that, we'll send it to the man on the mic, Mr. Brendan Fitzgerald. Take it away, Brendan. For the fight tomorrow night. And now, the weigh-ins for UFC Fight Night. To randomly versus Lad. What's going on, Sacramento? Thanks for coming out to the Golden One Center. Give it up for Ariani and Brittany and Brooklyn, who is here. Sean Shelby is on hand. Fights start tomorrow. We've got a dozen fights, a lot of local flavor on this card. Let's get things started in the bantamweight division as Benito Lopez takes on Vince Morales. First to the scale, Vince Vendetta Morales. Oregon High School State Champion Vince Morales, one and one in the UFC, 
came up short of Dana White contender series, was looking to keep that momentum going as he won his last fight. Opportunities like this don't come often. He's one of the lucky ones that made it to the UFC. Let's see if he capitalized on that moment tomorrow night. Official weight, 135 and a half for Vince Morales. And his opponent from nearby Oroville, California, it is Benito, the golden boy, Lopez. So Benito Lopez, one of six Team Alpha Male members to be fighting on this card. What I think of the first thing you're going to see about him, right, guys, is the hair. It's not it quite good. on T. Woods level, but I'd say it's pretty <laughs> darn yeah, strong. The, uh, the break is very clean. He did say, however, he stole that look. He saw it at another fight card. He's like, I got to have that for myself. And he pulls it off pretty well. They should switch the face off to the other side so we get a picture of the yeah. black portion of the hairdo. <laughs> Up next, we are in the strawweight division. Lavinia Sosa takes on Brianna Van Buren. First to the scale from California, Brianna the Bull Van Buren. Very excited to see Brianna Van Buren. Uh, she's from Gilroy, California. She trains at American Kickboxing Academy. Her allegiances are very strong to Daniel Cormier because as many of you are probably aware, DC actually coaches high school wrestling at the same high school that Brianna graduated from. She actually left her junior year of high school because she was so eager to start her fighting career. She's got uh, she's got some good friends in her corner in DC. The Brazilian gangster Sosa. Well, Lavinia Sosa was scheduled to fight Cynthia Calvillo. The swap to Van Buren. She said that really the only main difference now is that I have to be ready to fight a southpaw, but Lavinia is riding a four-win streak. She was a former Invicta champion, who actually lost her title to Angela Hill, wanted a rematch, didn't get it, but has ever uh, uh, since moved on. 13-1 and one record, eight first-round finishes, so this woman definitely knows how to get a shot. She was committed to get that hat on in a very angular way. I know. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh there we go. No. All right. Well, it looked like we know what type of fight we're in for so. tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh. Well, yeah. There you go. Up next, we are in the bantamweight division. Liu Pingyuan takes on Jonathan Martinez. First to the scale, Jonathan Dragon Martinez. All right, the dragon walking up. He is 10 and 2 as a professional MMA fighter. He said, I got into MMA from Taekwondo. I got into Taekwondo because I couldn't stay out of trouble. Either way it go, he's found himself in the UFC. 136 pounds for Martinez. And looking to make a splash tomorrow. Liu Ping Yu Tyra and I will see your story on how uh, Jonathan Martinez got in this sport, and I will raise you the story of how Ping Yuan got in this sport. He's from China. Some of his friends years ago, they took a trip to the United States. They had a good time. They brought back something for him. It was a gift. It was a disc. It was a pride DVD with Vanderlei Silva fighting on it. He took one look at it. He said, wow, this is for me. This is what I got to be doing. So his life took a major turn because some of his friends went to the U.S. and brought him back a pride DVD. I was wondering if he was going to get that story off before he got to the face off. You did I'm it. good, right? Yeah. You had to take a couple deep breaths because you got it done. Up next, we are in the featherweight division. Darren Elkins takes on Ryan Hall. First to the scale, Ryan the Wizard Hall. Hi, I'm Ryan Hall, fighting out of Falls Church, Virginia. And the nickname The Wizard came from Uriah Faber on The Ultimate Fighter Season 22. Yeah, it's interesting that he brings up his time on The Ultimate Fighter because he was under coach uh, Uriah Faber. His opponent, Darren Elkins, is trained at Team Alpha Male. And one thing these guys told me is that while they were on that, that season, Ryan Hall was teaching the team how to do heel hooks. And now he's going to try and do one against Darren Elkins. So he basically taught him what he's going to try and do tomorrow night. Well, you know, Darren Elkins is going to definitely step forward, put a lot of pressure on him. So he'll be close enough if you want to try to grab him and throw the leg lock in or heel hook. Um, but Elkins is known for his endurance, his ability to take punches. And he has the jet damage completely across the front of his chest. And he is committed to the cause. And you can never count him out. It's been several times like Marseille Bertek. Yeah, yeah. Very last minute, came back and won that fight. What would it take for you to get a damaged tattoo on your chest? Um, not going to happen. Um, not <laughs> yeah. this lifetime. Maybe, maybe in the afterlife. 
Up next in the women's bantamweight division, Juliana Pena takes on Nico Montano. First to the scale, the former flyweight champion, Nico Montano. Guys, I gotta be honest, there were times over the last few years that I did, I did not think we would see Nico Montano back in this sport, quite frankly. All the hardships that she went through, she was stripped of the title, she, she didn't make weight against Valentina Shevchenko, and then there was a, an issue with USADA, she was suspended for six months. Even she herself said, you know what, I gave some thought to walking away, maybe fighting just isn't for me, but it kept pulling her back. Every now and then she'd feel bored, she'd go to jiu-jitsu practice, and now here she is, she says, you know what, I'm still a fighter, I'm gonna continue this career. The Venezuelan vixen, Pena. And Juliana having a very similar story, you know, victories of the cats. Juliana Vixen, Juliana Pena. I am fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of Spokane, Washington. I want you guys to know that I'm the first female to win the Ultimate Fighter. I'm seven and one in the UFC octagon, and I am back to bring some excitement into the bantamweight division. Well, I apologize, I jumped the gun, and she took all my information anyway. But <laughs> she's back and looking better than ever. And if you guys were curious, that is the Navajo Nation flag that Nico Montano uh, walked out with. Up next, we are in the featherweight division. Andre Feely takes on Shaman Marais. First to the scale, Shaman Marais. Shaman Marais, definitely a beast, Brazilian fighter. Now he's fighting out of Los Angeles. Kenny Johnson, Kevin Casey, a lot of the tough guys are training with 11 and three right now. He is known to get it on. We saw him against the beat. Yes. He put on everything he did. We saw him against the deep. Once again, he will put on a crazy kickboxing performance. You can never count this kid out. Touchy, feeling. My name is Andre Touchy Feely. I'm 19 and 6. I fight out of Team Alpha Male right here in Sacramento, California. I'm going to win this fight, get a bunch of tattoos, eat a bunch of pizza, ride my motorcycle, and play with my bulldog Harley. Yeah, another Team Alpha Male guy. And one thing Andre told me this week is that when he first joined that gym, he used to call his high school buddies and be like, guess what? You'll never believe this. I got beat up by Uriah Faber today. I took a right hand by Chad Mendez. He was young when he started with that team. Now you see the maturity. You see that he's, he's coming into his own. He's in his prime. And this is a big fight here against Shaman Marais. And speaking of Monty Mendez, we need to wish him well in his retirement. Absolutely. Amazing career. Great fight. On ESPN Plus in the light heavyweight division, Mike Rodriguez takes on John Allen. First to the scale, John. John Allen, 13 and five, but this is his UFC debut. He loves Vanderlei Silva, hence him fighting out of shoe box. Nine KOs, 92% of the time he's in a fight, he finishes it. So I don't know how many fighters in the UFC are 90% and above, but he's among few, and he's definitely looking to get a finish today. Well, thank you for jinxing it now, Tyre. I know I messed it up, and I said today, so unless he punches a guy on the scale, it's impossible. Slow, Mike Rodriguez. Well, Mike Rodriguez uh, is from my home state of Massachusetts, training out of Lausanne MMA. You know, we talk about how people come to find the sport of MMA. Apparently, I guess he had knocked a kid out in the high school cafeteria, got suspended for it, and in the meantime, a teacher introduced him to mixed martial arts, and hey, maybe you should try this, and uh, basically found it, loved it, committed himself to it, so. Uh, a roundabout way to find it. And T-Wood, I hate to tell you, but I believe this man has a 100% finishing rate. Wow, well, <laughs> that's why they matched this fight up together. I guess so. The main card on ESPN Plus starts at middleweight between Marvin Vittori and Cesar Fajeda. First to the scale, Cesar Mutanchi Fajeda. First time I met Cesar Fajeda, it was eight years ago, 2011, he was helping Randy Couture train for Leota Machida. Cesar was Leota Machida in the, in the training room. He was trying to mimic him, trying to give Randy the looks that he would see out there at UFC 129. He's had an up and down career since then, but he says he's won five of his last seven and he attributes that to a move that he made over to Florida. He's with a new coaching staff and he always had the potential, obviously. I mean, this guy was working with Randy Couture at a very young age, but now they're refining it. Now they're working on the timing of it. His confidence is high and this is an important fight for him here in Sacramento. 
Yeah, I mean, he's been Vitor's uh, protege for Marvin. his whole career, the too, as well. So, very strong influence. Career. Yeah. Woo! I'm Marvin Vittori, the Italian dream. I'm 12, 4, and 1, fighting out of Kings MMA in Huntington Beach, California, by the way of Mezzo Corona, Italy. I'm going in there trying to break this guy mentally and physically. I'm going in there to make a statement. Just less than a year ago, he was fighting Israel Adesanya. He actually lost that fight by split decision, meaning one judge thought he won, so let's not take him lightly. Crazy. By the way, we're way overdue for a UFC Italy. Way overdue. Call me in for that one. I co-signed that as well. First to the scale, making his UFC debut tomorrow night, Wellington, the prodigy, Turman. Well, here he is, Wellington Turman, which I gotta say is the first Brazilian I have ever heard of with the first name Wellington. I don't know about you guys. That never heard it. Seems like a rare one down there in the South, but he's coming in with a 15 and two record into his UFC debut. You know, I talked to Carl Roberson about that record. He thinks it's a little bit padded, which Wellington didn't like him saying. He says, hey, you know what? I, I fought hard guys and I've trained with UFC guys in the gym. I know what I'm getting myself into here. Well, here his, is his opponent, Carl Robertson. He comes to us with a 7-2 and two record, um, for two knockout wins, three by submission. But this is a man who gets a lot of his training in with uh, Corey Anderson, David Branch. So he's working on the grappling side with those guys, but he comes to us with a kickboxing background and definitely knows how to use those long limbs. 100%. You look at this build. He's built like a striker. Yeah. That's an intense stare down. Yep, that was a fun stare down. Next, we are in featherweight division as Josh Emmett takes on Mirsad Bektic. First to the scale, ranked 12th in the featherweight division, Mirsad Bektic. Well, the last time we saw Mirsad, it was all the way back in June of 2018 when he got a uh, very nice win over Ricardo Lamas, very highly ranked fighter there. So Mirsad has been out. He's been kind of dealing with some injuries. Um, it doesn't sound like anything too huge, but definitely just trying to heal up from that. Um, Official weight, 145 pounds. Now, the last Mirsad time we saw him, though, he was working just the stash. And I gotta be honest, I liked his mustache. More than the I miss the stash. It was pretty up. I do, I miss it. I like this Josh right here Davis. versus the stash. But his opponent, Josh Emmett, Josh has played the spoiler so many times. You've seen it against Ricardo Lama, who saw it against right there, against Michael Johnson, very, very highly ranked fighter. He has the poise, he knows he has the power, he's patient. Be patient and he knows how to find that punch. He will put that right hand on you right quick. Listen, the loss and the damage that he took after the Jeremy Stevens fight, I think a lot of fighters would have just tapped out at that point and never come back to fight. So the fact that he's come back, gotten victories, he's a very, very, very tough man. And now let's take a closer look at the two men involved in our co-main event. So it's been a few years since I've been in the octagon and being present in the sport, working on technique with the next generation, either participating or cheering guys on. It's, it's almost like you have uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out. And as you get older, if you're gonna jump back in, you have to make a hard yes and a hard commitment and do it and you can't wait too long. With the way I feel physically, and the way I've been involved in the sport since, since my retirement, I just felt like I wanted to do it. And so when you feel like you want something, you go after it. Right now is the time to get in and itch that scratch of, of getting a little fist fight in. So I prepped my body and, and decided to go back to my, my best weight at 135 pounds. And they brought out this, this tough kid, Ricky Simone. I feel like I know Uriah very well. I grew up watching him. Being a smaller guy myself in the lighter weight classes, he, he was a, a trailblazer. The California kid stands him up and sits him down. 
I like Uriah's style because he's non-stop pressure, and, and that's what I like to do as well. Got him with the left, chasing him down. Uriah Faber showing killer instinct. And there is the tap, another submission victory. A lot of the light, lighter weight guys are looked up to him and are thankful to him, but you know it's a different era. He's got Look the out. team. He's out. My goodness, Ricky Simone. You're right, I definitely picked the wrong fight to come back out of retirement. I'm not the guy. I'm too fast, I'm too strong, and I'm too powerful. Oh, he's right to so I honestly feel like I do everything better. Oh! People are gonna know who I am after this fight, and by going in there and being a legend, I'm gonna start my legacy. I know that I have the ability to finish. I know I have the ability to stop Ricky. If all goes as planned, I should be getting the finish. I retired in Sacramento and I'm, I'm coming back in Sacramento. There's no fight like a hometown fight. I'm excited to keep California and Sacramento proud. First, First to the scale, the 15th ranked bantamweight contender, Ricky Simone. Ricky Simone, 15 and one, three and in the UFC. He is a very calculated fighter. He said he has a 3.8 GPA coming out of college, no grammatical errors in his bio, and he's definitely watched Uriah Faber. He watched him as a fan, and he watched him probably studying him and broke down film, so I think he'll be prepared for this fight. It's quite the mullet. And he got a mullet on. The California Kid, Uriah Faber, and I don't think Uriah would mind if I shared this with you guys. You know, about two years ago when he was announcing that retirement, I asked him, kind of off the record, hey, Uriah, are you really done? Are you really done? And he gave me this look, you know, kind of a half wink of like, yeah, you'll probably see me again. This was never a retirement for Uriah Faber. This was a break, and he wanted to take that long break. He didn't want anybody bothering him. He didn't want media calling him. He just wanted to be a little bit like a retired fighter, but he was always meant to be back here staring in front of somebody, and here it is, Ricky Simone. A word here with Ricky Simone first. Ricky, the brightest stage of your career. What are your thoughts here coming into what should be a hostile environment tomorrow night? Man, this is going to be awesome. I'm so excited to come out and show the new generation. Excellent. Thank you very much. Ricky Simone, everybody. Uriah Faber, everybody. Welcome back. What's up, folks? Thanks for coming out. What does it mean to come back here in Sacramento? Man, it, it means the world to me. I love this place. Can't wait to perform. We look forward to it. Uriah Faber, everybody. And now let's take a closer look at the two women involved in our main event. Born and raised in the Netherlands, Jermaine Durandamy is one of the greatest female kickboxers ever. 20 years of fighting. It's been a long journey. I enjoyed every minute of the journey. 46 and 0, 10 time world Muay Thai champion. And that's one of the nastiest strikers to ever compete. I think I'm able to compete for so long because I'm a fighter at heart. This woman has some of the most devastating power. She, they should stop this fight. In this division or at 145. Stop it is fight. all over. Good stop. Jermaine Durandamy. I breathe fighting. I sleep fighting. Fighting is in my DNA. Oh, that one. Oh, oh. Jermaine Durandamy blowing the doors off in Rotterdam. A lot of people pay a lot of money to see us fight. You know, so let's make it a fight. I don't mind throwing all the technique on the side and just bite down on my mouthpiece and have fun. And I think Aspen is the right girl for that. Oh! Massive ground and pound strikes landed from Aspen Lad! Every time I step into the octagon, I pour everything in. And that is it! Crazy. The absolute total domination as soon as it went to the ground. I don't leave anything in reserve. I don't hold anything back. What Aspen Lab represents is potential. She's young, she's exciting, and that is it! It's the classic matchup. Jermaine is a world-class striker. She's one of the best at what she does. I'm pretty sure she's been striking. Jermaine has been striking longer than I've been alive. But uh, it's not a boxing match. It's not a Muay Thai fight. This is an MMA fight. I think it's going to come down to the person who could combine their skills better, who could really embrace all aspects of the sport. She's young, she's hungry, but uh, 
I'm gonna bring something to the table. Aspen Red has not faced or ever felt before. I'm coming to bring one hell of a fight. First to the scale from nearby Pioneer, California. She is the fourth ranked women's bantamweight contender and still undefeated, Aspen Lab. Look guys, we said it right from the top of this broadcast that everything has gone according to plan so far for Aspen Ladd, but this is a big, big step up. This is a five round main event. I, oh, she has wait, still got some development to do. Pounds. It's not Sports a good place to, to be Ladd. learning on the fly against someone who is very experienced. So she has to work it out for her, but if she beats Jermaine Durandame, it will shock nobody in the MMA world. In fact, she's the betting favorite on Saturday. Women's bantamweight contender in the world. Jermaine Durandamy is more than a step up. She is a former UFC champion, the first in the featherweight division, and she is just vicious with her combination. Official weight 136 pounds for Jermaine Durandamy. Her punches, her clinch work, and definitely her killer instinct. Aspen, your first UFC main event, and it comes near your hometown, face this way. How do you feel about tomorrow night? I'm extremely excited. I haven't fought at home since as an amateur. It's crazy to come back as the main event. Excellent. Good luck to you tomorrow night. Aspen Ladd, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And Jermaine Durandamy. Jermaine, another UFC main event and a chance to keep fighting towards the top. How do you feel about the matchup? I feel great. I'm, I'm fighting a young and hungry girl, and uh, let's make some fireworks tonight. Jermaine Durandamy, everybody. We will see you tomorrow night. ESPN Plus, first fight at 2 local time, 5 Eastern. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Jermaine Durandamy, T-Wood, 46 professional Muay Thai fights, 46 wins.